shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after these ten worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Oh, my <laughs>
we come to you in the most humble manner way that we know how. God, before we ask you for anything, we first want to say thank you. That even in a time like this, you still love us. And you shower your blessings upon us. And for that cause, we invoke your presence right now. We ask, oh God, that you touch this man. Yes, yes. We invite you to do what only you are able to do. It's to bring healing, peace, and restoration. God, in the name of Jesus, we invite you to this service. That it will be a service that you will be well pleased with. And that everything we do be done under thine own divine anointing. We'll fail be in thy gratitude to lift your name with praise, honor, and glory. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name we pray. And the children of God say, Amen. Following these services as our ninth of our scripture by Bishop Hamilton, our prayer of comfort by Pastor Witherspoon, selection by Devarius Hughes, then words of comfort and recession. In that order, please, ma'am, please. Sir. I've chosen. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heaven. There's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, There's a time to mourn and a, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away. There's a time to tear, and a time to mend. There's a time to be silent, and a time to speak. There's a time to love, and a time to hate. There's a time for war, and a time for peace. So use God's words for this time to find comfort. There's a time for every season. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed, give in reverence to our God. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God. Oh Lord, we thank you for being our God and for being so good to us. Through it all, you still look high, you sit high and look slow. We ask forgiveness of our sins and they have mercy on our souls. Oh God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Master, we ask, oh God, that you just wrap your arms around this dear family, your children, God. Let them know that joy comes in the morning. Oh God, let them know that you are a confidant. Let them know that each day you will continue to walk with them and talk with them. Let them, God, remember the sweet memories of their dear friend, their father. Dear God, help them, Jesus, in every way. For we need thee every hour. Oh, God, we need thee. So, Lord, have your way. Your will be done. Because as long as you're with us, Master, we are all right. In the name of Jesus, we pray. 
Let everyone say amen, amen, and amen. There's been times when I I felt in doubt, but I didn't give up, even though I gave out. Seemed like something God's got all in my way, and the roads got longer the more. But when it seemed like I couldn't make it alone, 
God is still in charge. It may not feel like it. But he made a promise that I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. It may not feel like he's there, but I promise you he is right by your side. I just want to encourage you for just a few moments to trust God. Yeah. Over the years, I found out that it's only two times to praise God, and that's when you feel like it and when you don't. And right now, I'm glad to know that the Holy Spirit will intercede on our behalf. That when we really are down and out, yes, God is able. Yes, if we learn to put it in his hands. Yes, this was the problem with Mary and Martha. They had to learn to put it in the Lord's hands. Yes. Even though he had promised, and they felt like because he didn't show up, when they wanted him to, he wouldn't fix it. But he did. There are no words that anyone would ever be able to say that will take away what you feel right now. But I just want to encourage you to keep looking to Jesus. He's the one. And he's able to bring peace in the midst of your storm. Now, I can't preach this beyond. He's already done that. I don't have a heaven nor a hell to put anybody in. It's not mine to give or keep anybody out. The only one that's able to do that is Jesus. And I found out something else that has always been said. It's not always what you know, but who you know. And going to heaven is the same way. Because, beloved, you've got to know Jesus in order to get in. And that brings me to this passage of Scripture in the book of St. Mark, chapter 5. Beginning with the 18th through the 20th verse. And in verse 18, and Jesus was getting into a boat. The man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord hath done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in Decapolis how much the Lord had done for him. And all the people were amazed. If I might use for a subject of thought, I'd simply say, what you see is only half my story. All of us have a story. All of us have been through something. All of us are going through some things. But yet, God is able. Every one of us have a story, and the end result is, if we give it to Jesus, you don't look like what you've been through. And if, if we would just think about how nature is, even Salmon, once they're born, Later in life, they spawn their way. They're trying to get back to the place in which they were born. We as humans need to think about this for a second because God created all of us. However we got here, God allowed us to be here. Yes. And I'm determined that whatever state I'm in now, I can't go home like this. Mama. You see... To be honest with you, hate is something that is taught. Yes. 
As children, we play with each other. Don't care what we look like, what we smell like, yes. what we act like. All we know is we're going to play. Yes. But somewhere along the line, someone who's older than us will teach us hate. We can't go home with hate in our hearts. So as we have this man, who had a family, but yet he had some issues. He dealt with his issues the only way he knew how. Mama. Beloved, all of us have some kind of issue. My and we deal with them however we feel like we can deal with it. Yes. <clears throat> Whether it be through Henny, Amen. 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 Yes, now go ahead. Bing. Yeah, Jim, go ahead. Little tweed on the side. <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> Oxys. Whatever way we feel like, we can deal with our issues. But this man had some internal issues. He had some demons. And beloved, before you point the finger, we all have some demons. Every one of us in here, up in here, up in here. We all got some kind of demon. Because if you're lying, guess what? That's a demon. If you're doing whatever else, beloved, it's a demon. This man had several. His family loved him. They did all they could to help him. But it got to the point that they had reached the plateau. They had gone as far as they knew how to go. And now he has ended up in the tombs. The scripture says he was cutting himself with stones. Now, cutting himself meant that he was doing some kind of circumcision. So he was trying his best to deal with his demons the best he could. He was trying to cut them to get them out. And Jesus was somewhere on the other side of the Sea of the Gatherings. After he had fed over 5,000 men, plus women and children, he began to say to his disciples, look, fellas, I've got to go to the other side. What that means to us is he came for this one individual. So, beloved, he loved every one of us. Mm -hmm. He knows each of us by our name. He knows how many hair we have on our head, whether it's live or memorex. <laughs> whether we grew it or we bought it, he knows All right. what's there. So, for that cause, he came to the other side of the gallery. For this one individual. And after he had gotten there. You see at this point. It was just a few days after. His baptism. And his 40 days and nights. In the wilderness and fasting. And after fasting. I'm going to be honest with you. The devil will come after you. With everything he got. Amen. It's his job. And he does it. Well. So now here comes Jesus and he ran into the demonic and he handled him just like heaven. He had compassion on him. You see, this wasn't the first time that Jesus had dealt with demons or demonic presence. And they knew it. So as soon as he shows up, 
they began to ask him, let us go into the swine. You see, Jews weren't supposed to eat pork anyway, so they were just trying to find a way of escape. And Jesus allowed them to go into the swine. And when they got into the swine, they ran off a cliff and drowned in the sea. Mm -hmm. Now the owners of the swine were perplexed. They got all tore down yeah. because their money was gone. It was a shortage of cracklings this year. It was a shortage of bacon and pig feet, chitlins. <laughs> It was a shortage of sausage and everything else. And now their money was looking funny. And they began to tell him, look at him. You got to get up out of him. You got to leave town. And as they began to look around, they said, oh, you need to go too, talking to Jesus. You see, this man had everything going for him at that point because he had met up with a man by the name of Jesus. All right. Now, you know, when Jesus first started talking to him, he asked him, what's your name? And he said, my name is Legions, my, 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 my. for we are many. You see, Legions is not even a name, it's a number. Yeah. So that meant that he had more than one demon to fight. But the thing about it is, all of us have a story. Yes. I don't know your story. My Lord. And you don't know my story. I don't understand your pain, nor do you understand mine. But I'm not even going to try to figure it out. The only thing I need to know today is that when I do come into the presence of God, my worship. Come on, preacher. Is for real. Yes, Lord. And if, every time, any time you come into the presence of the Lord, it becomes a mirror to us yes. that we're able to see ourselves just as we are. Mm -hmm. And after we've come into contact with Jesus, just as he did for this man, he gave one word. Come out, thou unclean spirit. And he did. Now, Luke's gospel says that the man was naked. Mark says that he was fully clothed. Now, I don't know where his clothes came from. Mm -hmm. But what I do know is when you give whatever you got to Jesus, he'll make everything all right. All right. If you give him your hurt, he'll give you some peace. If you give him your sickness, he can give you some health. Yes. Whatever it is that we have going wrong, I declare that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we may say, think, and or even ask. I don't know where his clothes came from, but I do know that if we give Jesus all of our issues, he's able to. To make them all right. Is there anybody here today. That needs to start over again. Anybody here today. That's having issues. That's got some problems. Some demons you're fighting. Whatever it is. I declare to you today. That God is able. To make everything all right. Now I've got to give the brother some credit here. Whatever happened in his life. He knew that if he could just. Get to Jesus. Come on. He would make everything all right. Come so on, today, Richard. I've got to give you the same remedy for a sin sick world. If we can just get to Jesus, I believe that everything will be all right. You see, the thing about this man is when he had gotten to Jesus, he wanted to go with him. And I promise you, if somebody has been as good to you as Jesus has, you ought to want to be with him. He went back to the ship and Jesus said to him, hold up, I got another assignment for you. I got something you need to do. I need you to go home, tell your friends, tell your family what great things the Lord have done. So every one of us ought to be able to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. If the Lord has ever done anything for you today, you ought to be able to reach over and let this family know that it's going to be all right after a while. It's going to be all right. It may not feel like it right now. Yeah. But if you just hold on, I'm glad that God is able to turn some things around. Yeah, I'm glad to know.
believe that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we may say, thank and or even ask. So today, I just want to encourage you that the story that he had, the ending may not have ended the way you wanted it to, but every one of us have an opportunity, even at the last hour, to get it right with the Lord. Yes, sir. Now, it's not good to wait up until the last minute. You know, some of us just prone to be late. Amen. But it's not good. And I'll tell you why. Because we forfeit so many benefits in following Jesus. If we will follow him, he give us so much. You don't have to die to get all of the benefits that God has. Amen. The ultimate benefit is living in heaven with him. But for right now, there's so many benefits that he gives us a little love letter every day. You got one this morning and didn't realize it. When the sun came up, that's a benefit. When you got up this morning, you were able to put one foot before the other, that's a benefit. If you're here today and you were able to put your hands together, that's a benefit. When we look around with our own eyes, whether they're two or four, that's a benefit. Whatever we have right now, those are the benefits of following Jesus. And today, I just want to encourage you to keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. Because the way we are, He's still blessing us. So what you see is only half of everybody's story. But we all have a story. Yes, yes, yes. But you know what? He's still writing our story. He's not finished with us yet. So today, if you just keep holding on and allow him to rewrite the pages of our story. See, everything we do, good and bad, it go in a book. In the book of life. Now, we're writing our own stories right now. Hallelujah. But you know, one thing about it is, God has a Holy Ghost eraser. So a lot of the stuff that we don't want anybody else to know, and all of us have done some stuff, we don't want nobody to know. And he's got an eraser. If we come to him in repentance, he'll mark it out. Then he'll give us a page just like that. A clean slate. A clean slate. That we can start over. So today, whatever, however, I just need you to trust God. And believe that he will come. Now, Gladys Knight had a song that she said. She talked about somebody being the best thing that ever happened to her. I don't know who Gladys was talking about. But I can tell you this. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. She trusted me.
man that's born of a woman hath but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up like a flower, and he fleeth as it were a shadow, and never continueth in one state. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor but of thee, O Lord? Who for our sins are justly displeased? Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, Lord, most holy, O God, most mighty, most merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal. Suffer us not at the last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. For as much as it have pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take unto himself the soul of our departed brother, we therefore commend his body to the place prepared for it, that ashes may return to ashes and dust to dust, and the imperishable spirit, refined as by fire, may forever be with the Lord. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labor. Let us all repeat the Lord's Prayer together in unison. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and forever. Amen. journey's just begun. Life holds so many phases that this earth is only one. Think of him as living in the heart of those he's touched. For someone's love is never lost. And Tito Nelson was loved very much. On behalf of the staff and national proper funeral home, I'd like to present your family with a small token of love. May God be with each of you and we love you. Please accept this on behalf of your family. Thank you. 